And now, my friends, the man who's the main host of the off-screen podcast, available from about 8 o'clock this morning with his partner in uh, Podcast Crime. More on that anon, because Van Connor's back on the show. Our uh, Van Friday, when it comes to all free view film recommendations. Half a dozen movies between the two of us. Good morning, Van. How's your week been, mate? What big movie? Have you seen the new Transformer film, for example, this week? I, I have, unfortunately, seen the new Transformers movie, I'm, I'm sad to say. Um, I mean, I, I can say it's the third best one, but I'd rather describe it aptly as the third least terrible. I mean, I'm always minded of it. I'm not a huge fan of the former. I'm reminded of the, the line from Macbeth, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. But it'll make money. It'll make money. That's a good thing, I suppose, oh, yeah, yeah. for cinemas generally. Let's start with your very first recommendation, a film I don't know a lot about. I think it's on Film 4. It's on tonight at 9 o'clock, Mile 22. Tell us more, please, Van. Do you know, I'm a sucker for a good schlocky Peter Berg action. Peter Berg is what would happen if, like, Michael Bay read The Guardian. That's, that's basically <laughs> what you'd get. This is from 2018. It's a, it's a straight sort of A to B action. Stars Mark Wahlberg as the leader of an elite special forces team who's tasked with uh, basically escorting a witness. And it's meant to be, it's called a, a fictional country called Indocar. It's very clearly meant to be Indonesia. And you've got, uh, you know, a, a, a government sort of turn states evidence witness that they have to transport from, you know, across the city to 22 miles away to the plane that's going to take him to freedom. And then he'll give them the passcode that will give them the information they need to take down the bad guys. But of course, every one of said bad guys has it out for them along the way so they're going to have to work for every one of the 22 miles that they have to traverse. Uh, it's got Eco Uwe from The Raid in there, it's got Ronda Rousey, it's got uh, Lauren Cohen from The Walking Dead it's, it's a good solid, you know, churn and burn I must say, it's got, action. It's got me watching because I love, from the warriors onwards, it's, it's part of almost an archetypal story isn't it, people warriors making it home, warriors making it through this Clint Eastwood yeah. and the gauntlet, I mean it's been, there was, was it Six Bridges or something, a Bruce Willis film or something where he had to tra- take some kind of suspect oh across town that was 16 blocks and 16 you know that blocks. actually started life as one of the aborted attempts at a Die Hard sequel they then just rewrote it into a completely different Bruce Willis action they even aged him up to give it some distinction uh, this is very much in line with 16 blocks actually but you know like I say a churn and burn action that you'd only get if you're the guy that made Battleship into a movie uh, it, it's, it's good solid <laughs> action fun uh, you can see this tonight uh, film for 9 o'clock I've got a clip for you this is, this is Wahlberg laying out the state of play I bet he speaks a little bit like this at times. Here we go, Mars 22, <laughs> film for tonight, 9 o'clock. That's my asset. Who is he? Lee Noor. I don't want to know his name, I don't know what he does for a living, I want to know who is he. A loner. No kids, no family, 100% accurate and reliable. You mark him or he mark you? I marked him. He says he has the exact location to all six sets of season. He's locked it on a disc. He says only if we get him out of the country and give him asylum will he open the disc. You gonna deal with this or you want me to handle it? I got it. This is serious, right? Oh, very. This is serious, right? Yeah, yeah, well done, mate. I think you've passed the death on that one. Now, my first recommendation <laughs> is a film that caused a huge furore when it first came out, based on a best-selling Ooh, yeah. book by William Peter Blatty, who I believe was some kind of naval intelligence officer, so he'd been trained as a spook almost by the American government. The film is The Exorcist. It's on 12.30, just after midnight tonight, so it's in the wee small as a Saturday morning, but I know you'll allow that one. From 1973, it cost, back in the day, $12 million. and because there were so many troubles with, first of all, casting and then with the production, mm. which was hyped up the PR people. That was three times the original budget. So William Peter Blatty, who wrote the novel, was the producer. William Friedkin, great director, French correction director and a lot more. He directed it. Cost 12 million. It made $428 million. So a huge success. Controversy in the States because it swerved the R rating. So children mm. were allowed to see this film, which is still, I think, not because of some of the effects, some of which look a little hokey now, but because it's got that disturbing way of getting under your skin and you're not quite sure what's going on and should we believe this or not I mean I still think this is one, not, it's not a favourite film of mine, I think it's a remarkable piece of filmmaking we all know film critics who rate this as like the greatest <laughs> of all time, by the same token though I think it's a, it's a must see film for anybody interested in A cinema and B horror films, you've got to cross the Exorcist Bridge I think, have you? whether you like it or not Van well, I mean, it's an all-time banger, and obviously I, I spend an awful lot of time around a certain quiffed, bespectacled film critic friend of mine who I believe rates this as the greatest movie yep. ever made, and will talk at length about it if you give him half the chance. So I'm, I'm a fan. I, I, I've been made a fan by him through a lot of browbeating over the years. I, I think it is genuinely it's one of the all-time genre classics, definitely. And what I find fascinating is there's um, basically, sorry in a shell of a nut, is the, the daughter of a very successful Broadway actress suddenly has what seem to be fits, hallucinations, delusions, mm. and they, they, they put her through the kind of rigmaroles of modern science, including this thing where they take fluid from her spine, which is when most people fainted in the States when it's first shown, which almost seems to suggest that actually, you know, there's a, there's a 
our modern medicine maybe is as much in the dark and as much <laughs> hocus pocus as some of the kind of yeah. extremes of exorcism practice in this film. It's a remarkable bit of filmmaking. It's of its time, but all the better for it. It's on 12.30, just after midnight tonight on BBC One. I would say enjoy, but you probably won't. It's a must-see. Here's a clip <laughs> from the very 70s trailer. Uh, nobody expected it. <laughs> nobody believed it. And nothing could stop it. There are no experts. You probably know as much about possession as most priests. Look, your daughter doesn't say she's a demon. She says she's the devil himself. I'm telling you that that thing upstairs isn't my daughter. Now, I want you to tell me that you know for a fact that there's nothing wrong with my daughter except in her mind. You tell me you know for a fact that an exorcism wouldn't do any good. You tell me that! And separated the men for the boys when it comes to movie trivia is the name Pazuzu. I'll say no more than Ooh, that. Yeah. Max von Sydow pops out, of course, favourite with uh, Ingmar Bergman and Woody Allen, but there's nothing laughing about this. But he's only this where he is the exorcist. This is my first recommendation. Your second one is, I think, the fourth remake of an absolutely classic Hollywood story. It's the Lady Gaga and Bradley, what's his name, version of A Star Is Born. Is that right? It is indeed. And, you know, as, as you say, there's so many versions of this now. Like Every generation gets its own version of A Star Is Born. We actually skipped one, actually, I think, in what would have been the 1990s. And I maintain if they'd done it in the late 1990s, Jane Spader and Britney Spears would have done an amazing Ooh. job. Oh, yes. But, so, it, uh, that, that's complete fan casting. I would have loved to have seen that version, though. Um, this, of course, is the directorial debut of Bradley Cooper, who also stars here in the male lead. I think most remember to someone my age is Chris Christopherson. Yeah. I think his version. And uh, forms a sort of big screen acting debut for Lady Gaga. This is sort of, I mean, she'd done television. I think she'd done American Horror Story prior to this. But we didn't really know that she could act, yeah. let alone on this stage. And she's sort of proven that it, she's not a one-trick pony. I think she's pretty good in House of Gucci as well. I'm looking forward to seeing what she does in the uh, the Joker sequel this next year. And is of course the star of the story of one star who is fading as another, his protege who takes under his wing and who becomes the great love of his life, is the star to well, the star that is born, the star due to rise. It's a harrowing, borderline traumatic version this time around. It's also got just an absolute banger of a theme song in uh, I think it's the Shallows, isn't it? Yes. I think it won. Yep. It won best original song. I believe at the Academy Awards that year it's a great one I've got a clip for you and it is just the the chance encounter between Bradley Cooper and and Lady Gaga you can see this on Saturday night 10:20 on BBC one get the tissues in for this one for the love of God because this this is a proper tear jerker it's a really really harrowing version BBC one 10:20 uh, tomorrow night a star is born can I ask you a personal question do you write songs or anything I don't sing my own songs why? I just, I just don't feel comfortable. Why wouldn't you feel comfortable? Well, because, like, almost every single person that I've come in contact with in the music industry has told me that my nose is too big and that I won't make it. Your nose is beautiful. Are you showing me your nose right now? Yeah. You don't have to show it to me. I've been looking at it all night. Oh, come on. Oh, I'm going to no, be thinking not. about your nose for a very you're long time. You're full of I'm not full of I'm telling you, you the truth. Yeah, you're full of Touch your nose. Oh my gosh. Let me just touch it for a second. <laughs> oh, I feel like I'm dying. This is an archetypal story for Hollywood. Of course, the first version mm. was Frederick March and Janet Gaynor. Then, of course, it was James Mason and Judy Garland. James Mason. Then we had yeah. Chris Christopherson and the mighty Barbara Streisand. Although, apparently, she wanted Elvis to play the the, 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 yes. the and, and Colonel Trump said it's not for my boy and sadly Elvis died at 77 so it was never to be and that's Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga I wonder if somebody must have pitched the male female role reversal on this one mustn't they where it's the, the aging or you know the fading or prob problematic female star and an up and coming young lad I thought maybe that would have been the 90s version Hey, you give me Jane Fonda and Harry Styles in another version of this, and I'm what? You've got my money, sir. Marvellous stuff. Though I've gone for an 80s, early 80s classic. Again, another hugely lucrative film for the budget. It was the follow-up to George Miller's masterful first Mad Max film. By the time Mad Max 2 came along, known as the Road Warrior in the States, things in our mm. post-apocalyptic world have deteriorated even further. You've got mad tribes of roaming, gas-hungry or petrol-hungry um, nomads, murderous psychopathic nomads, led by the Lord Humongous, who suddenly realise there's a huge reserve of petrol left in one 
vast enclave. So they're a bit like marauding kind of uh, outlaws or Native Americans in an old west, a very western feel to this. So the, 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 the people protecting the petrol who want to head for somewhere new, a new paradise, if you like, um, are in trouble until one man turns up. The poster tag for this is one man can make a difference. He certainly does. I mean, this was, I suppose, this was the huge breakthrough role, was it not really, for Mel Gibson? After this, the world was his lobster because it's an amazing, I mean, the action sequences in this and his performance in this are equally fantastic, I think. Oh, very much so. When we got Fury Road, the fourth one of these in 2015, I think people were really shocked by how good it was yeah. on the action front. But for me, looking back at the second one at that point, it's like, no, it's not really much of a surprise. Like Road Warrior is a banger of an action yeah. flick. Also, it's got Vernon Wells in it. And every <laughs> great action movie of the 80s needs Vernon Wells. As Commando, Commander, of course, absolutely. Uh, needs Vernon Wells in his chain link vest every time. And it's a, it's a good health and safety advice in this film. If somebody is flinging a razor sharp boomerang at you, don't try and catch it because you might lose a finger or three. Oh. <laughs> it's Bad Match 2, The Road Warrior. It's 10 o'clock tonight on ITV4. It's from 1981. It is, to use uh, Van Connor's word, an absolute banger. Here's the trailer. Greetings from the Humongous. In a world without gas. The Humongous rules the wasteland. I'm gravely disappointed that you wish to take the gasoline out of the wasteland. Defend the fuel. We'll never walk away! Give me the pump, the gasoline, the whole compound. This is a land that prays for a hero. Well, if anyone's gonna get in there, it's gonna be you. Uh... This is Mad Max 2. Mad Max 3 Beyond Thunderdome was all right in its way, but it got a little bit kind of uh, ideas of delusions of adequacy, I think, given what mm. a great action this one was. I mean, all three are great films, I think, but that's a Mad Max 2, my second recommendation on tomorrow night, 10 o'clock on ITV4. My final recommendation is one of my favourite films, although it's an odd film, to put it mildly. It's a David Cronenberg film, but it's also got a Hollywood gloss on it. It stars Jeremy Irons, who probably pulled in two salads because he plays identical twins, who happen to be, you know, leading gynaecologists who operate in very odd, almost cardinal-like red robes, often operate together and delight in um you know pursuing women and the conquest of women and then sharing women between them often aren't aware they're identical twins so there's a real kind of horrible moral subtext to this as well and um, which david cronenberg the director canadian great director of my plays with brilliantly genevieve bujol one of the overlooked stars i think of the seven, late 70s into the 80s is the female lead there's some very very disturbing bits of this film indeed but it's one of those films that unlike other cronenberg films you don't kind of see some of the horrors. It's the intimation of them, I think, that makes this a really... In my, I, I prefer this film, if prefers the right word, to The Fly, I think, for that reason, because it's such a dark film at times. But it's well worth watching if you've never seen it. It's on that channel I've mentioned once or twice already. It's a freeview channel called Legend. It's on 12.30 Sunday night into Monday morning, so just after midnight Sunday night, Dead Ringers from 1988. The, the imagery in this film, the, this kind of, mm. the costume design in particular, it's fantastic in this film, I think. It's such a strange film, this one, man. I mean, I'm still getting over you referring to a David Cronenberg film as odd, Paul. I mean, imagine <laughs> David Cronenberg making yeah, an odd news movie. flash. It's Breaking news. Hold the back page. <laughs> Yeah, weird, weird bit of trivia, because since you brought her up, did you know that uh, Genevieve Biold uh, was the, the original casting for Captain Janeway on Star Trek Voyager? She actually filmed as Captain Janeway and just did not get the tone, so they actually sacked her wow. after the first day and then got uh, Kate Mulgrew in. Uh, but I know that this is now a, there's now a TV adaptation, yeah. I think it's on Prime, uh, starring Rachel Weisz yeah. in a gender-flipped version of this in the Jeremy Irons role. I'm really looking forward to seeing that at some point. Like... This is, I say, this is a class. I mean, I know I'm, I'm using the word banger a lot, but this is Cronenberg at his creepiest, yeah. I think. This is really sinister, even by his standards. And it's also one of those things, there's a, a kind of dark satire about how, again, I suppose linking a bit to the exorcist and how much we, how much trust we might place, perhaps unwisely at times, in medical professionals. Um, I wouldn't advise you to see this if you're going for any kind of intimate examination over the next week or so, but it is on Sunday night into Monday morning, 12.30am, just after midnight. It's Dead Ringers from 1988, an absolute classic on the Legend Channel. Here's yeah. part of the trailer. This is written Dr. Beverly Mantle. By every scientific measure, they are absolutely the same. They share everything. You haven't had any experience until I've had it too. Bev, you've got to try the movie star. She's unbelievable. Oh, doctor, you've cured me. You mean to say there's two of them? They're twins, dear. I think we should drop her then. You drop her. I'm in love with her. 
Oh, no, the madness of love. It's not going to end well for some of them. Okay, so that's my <laughs> final recommendation. And you've gone sportstastic for us once again, Ben. I've gone all tyres and fires for my final pick for the week. So it's Ron Howard's 2013 Formula One rock, well, clash of the Titans. It's the ultimate rivalry flick. It's Rush. And this is on BBC One Sunday night at 10.30. This is the movie that introduced uh, Daniel Bruhl uh, to the masses, really. And also gave, uh, I think, Chris Hemsworth arguably one of his best roles outside of, you know, being Thor. He did also, I think, star in Michael Mann's Black Hat the same year. But that was really overcooked and overlooked as well. Um, they are, of course, uh, James Hunt and Nicky Lauda, and it's the story of their rivalry through, I think it's, it's the 70s, I believe, um, on, on, you know, on the Formula One circuit and just how they consistently try to one-up one another, leading to literally tragic events at times. I thought this was just absolutely cracking, and I'd never seen Daniel Bruhl in anything to this point. I, I just think this is absolutely brilliant. I got to watch this long in advance at a distributor showcase day, and I was just blown away away by just just how effectively the the race sequences have been staged um specifically I, I, ron howard's eye for for the, for the visuals in this is something that years later when he did his star wars movie i, I had to look back on and think well the same guy made rush how could this possibly be um because i think solo is abysmal yep. rush though i think is the last great ron howard movie i think to date did you like the film Ransom? I thoroughly enjoyed that with Mel Gibson. That was Ron Howard as well. Yes. It was a great movie. Yeah, I loved Ransom. What a that, that is a cracking thriller as well. That was that was uh, Rene Russo and Dolroy Lindo, I think, as well. Oh, Gary Sinise as Gary well. Gary Sinise, well, that is a great thriller. Yeah, marvelous. Stuff. But Rush is a great Formula One film and a great film about individuals and about competition and people spurring each other on sometimes to take huge, extreme, excessive risks. When can we see this one? Remind us of that, please, Van. Uh, you can see this, uh, 10.30 on Sunday night on BBC One. I will say, though, I mean, in the interest of, you know, how good I think Hemsworth is in, the, is in this, I think he's a bit too good looking to convincingly be James Hunt, though, if I'm being really honest. Yeah, I, well, although James Hunt was, you know, 70s pin-up boy. He was a ladies' man. Yeah. One, absolutely. And, um, and what's the clip about you've got for us? I've got a clip for you. This, these are, uh, this is uh, Nicky Lauder's uh, description of, of his relationship with Hunt. Here we go, 10.30, Sunday night, BBC One, what a rush. My name is Nicky Lauda, and racing people know me for two things. The first is my rivalry with him. What about Hunt? Has he changed? No, he's going on wet. I don't know why it became such a big thing. We were just drivers, busting each other's balls. To me, this is perfectly normal. But other people saw it differently. That whatever it was between us went deeper. It was a fantastic time in Formula One's history, of course, and it's a great film, that one, folks. So that was Van's final recommendation. Remind us about off screen. I mentioned it earlier on. It's you and Adam, is it not? And, and what's on the agenda for this morning's uh, podcast? Uh, well, this uh, this morning we're going to be talking about, obviously, Transformers Rise of the Beast. There is an interesting new British drama called Love Without Walls about uh, a couple facing homelessness in Ooh. modern Britain. Uh, we have, and most most amusingly of all, we've got the new Guy Ritchie movie, The Covenant, uh, which is on uh, Prime Video now, which is the third Guy Ritchie movie in a row to go straight to streaming in his own country, which is insane to me. Is it another World War Two film, this one? Now, this is Jake Gyllenhaal in Afghanistan trying Ooh. to uh, rescue his translator who's been left behind. OK, I've, I've seen the war footage. I didn't realise what war it was on. So mm. that's the cover. I'm looking forward to the, the off-screen podcast. Always a fantastic listen. I'm from about eight this morning with you and, and, and Adam. Is that right? Uh, myself and Adam Ball, as always. It's a good time this week. We had a good laugh doing this week's one. Fantastic. So always have a great time with Van Connor on the programme. Six films for your consideration for this weekend, of course. And don't forget we've got the Champions League final tomorrow night. Build up from six on Chalks, but it's going to be a cracking weekend, cracking game of football. And by the way, did you know, Van, that West Ham won a certain Europa Conference trophy this week? I, I'll be honest with you, my, my football knowledge begins and ends with the plot of Ted Lasso, if I'm really honest. <laughs> and on the honest note, Van Connor with us each and every Friday. We're live till five. Come on, you irons.